Yes, you are audible. Uh, very good afternoon to you. This is for 30 minutes approximately, right? Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. I have to share the screen also. Let me know if my screen, I can't see the screen, what is, okay, okay, fine. So it is
is coming. Okay. So the YouTube, I guess, uh, participants as well as uh, students also must be viewing, right? Accordingly, I will try to. Okay. All right. So once you tell me to go ahead uh, uh, after read any formalities there, then let me know. Am I am I am I also visible on the screen? Okay. Thank you. Okay, audible also clearly. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, one and all. This is uh, P. Chirangiri, Assistant Professor, Department of E.C. Kids Varangal. It gives me immense pleasure in introducing our keynote address speaker, Professor uh, Dr. Suresh Chandra Satpati, Professor and Dean Research, KIIT Bhuvaneswar. Sir has accumulated 31 years of varied experience of teaching, research and administration during the course of hybrid learning. By choice, he took teaching as passion from 1988 until date. He is doing his work and still learning to improve day by day. He thoroughly enjoys leading the department and he has con contributed in capacity building details of teaching experience. <coughs> He has a very research interest. His main focus has been machine learning to intelligent system design. His research and publications are in the domain of neural network, image processing, wireless communications, pattern recognition, artificial intelligence, sensor network, swarm intelligence, data mining, etc. To summarize, Sir has got publications of 181 on date. Publications with Science Citation Index and Impact Factor of 90, Publication with Scopus of 91, Total Citations 5430, H Index of 39, Item Index of 108. So with this short uh, introduction towards our keynote address, now I welcome Suresh, Dr. Suresh Chandra Satpati sir to address our gathering with your keynote address. Sir, you may go ahead sir. Uh, thank you very much, 
just confirm me if I am audible or not. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And my screen is it uh, visible to everybody? I hope it is visible. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the conference organizers for giving me the opportunity to come live uh, uh, on streaming in the YouTube and also on the Google Meet. And this talk was uh, scheduled yesterday on the inaugural day of uh, the conference. But due to slight uh, uh, delay uh, of the previous talk, so it could not be uh, taken off. And uh, I had the good fortune to come live today uh, to deliver my talk. Uh, so slightly I have changed the title of the talk because uh, I have been given 30 minutes now uh, to speak. I understand after this there will be a valedictory session. And I also understand that this talk is after the lunch break. So generally after the lunch, uh, we all feel a bit sleepy. So I thought I'll make my talk very simple, uh, very clear and interesting so that uh, we can able to just uh, listen uh, uh, from the long distance on the online platform. Uh, I will not be uh, talking uh, more on the uh, particular topic, but definitely I like to highlight uh, interesting uh, problems and the alternate solutions. And my talk will be uh, very much uh, essential, I mean, may be useful for uh, uh, undergrad students, those who are planning to pursue their uh, uh, project or maybe planning to pursue their higher studies and planning to write some research article so they may get some idea. At the same time, uh, this may be also helpful to budding researchers who are all working towards their PhD or even the practitioners who are working for certain kind of research product, they might find it uh, a little useful in case they feel so. So without uh, much ado, let me uh, go ahead. My topic is uh, challenging problems and alternate solutions. Uh, everybody will agree with me that uh, in recent time, uh, machine learning, deep learning, such kind of buzzwords are creating a lot of craziness among uh, all we researchers and even the student uh, mass. Now, what's for all these kind of technologies are becoming so popular among all of us? Definitely. We are thinking of uh, uh, targeting some of the challenging problems and then we were thinking of having some better solution, some more feasible solution or rather alternate solutions. So let's first see what are the challenging problems we may have in, in general nature. Then we'll go uh, how can we tackle it and from there we can uh, develop and design and implement uh, the algorithms. Uh, for our own purpose. Some of the problems in this uh, real world are difficult to solve uh, because they may not be mathematically practical, they might be requiring large uh, source space or maybe the problem is time varying in nature and they may be operating on a noisy environment and there may be even competitors for uh, the problems. So real world problem is always uh, a big challenge. You must be uh, knowing that during COVID-19, it was really a very top challenge to uh, detect COVID-19 virus. And also equally top challenge to come out with uh, uh, a kind of, uh, you know, uh, what you take this uh, um, uh, vaccine. So it was a very top challenge. And you must be knowing some of the professors from the IIT and other part of the world, they have started developing uh, some kind of prediction system regarding what would be the spread, what will be the contact tracing, and also there are a lot of uh, uh, research on the supply chain management, uh, etc. So, given the particular situation of the real world problem, we failed measurably to apply our conventional solution techniques or the problem solving techniques. Not that we would
something new. Nobody knew anything about this minuscule, this minute COVID-19 virus. A very uh, minute COVID-19 virus made the entire world come still, stand still. And even now also, we are having the impact of that. You can understand that this particular conference which has started yesterday, it was in a hybrid mode. Even despite uh, we have our uh, uh, vaccine and we have all been uh, vaccinated with booster doses, but still then there is a phobia, there is a kind of, uh, you know, uh, fear that we may get infected in the COVID-19. And still the nature of this COVID-19 is unknown. When the problem is really very tough, definitely we need to think about some kind of solution which are not your usual conventional solution, it must be some kind of alternate solution. And that's what I wanted to say that real world problems are really very challenging and you cannot solve with whatever the knowledge base we have, whatever the solution we have from our traditional computing, traditional statistics, traditional mathematics. So we need to see beyond, beyond those. Now what are those beyond we will be exploring in our talk in next couple of minutes. Now, before that, as I said, classical methods. Classical methods often fail. The reason being, you always try to simplify the problem. If you remember in your school days, you have been given one problem, you always assume, assumptions. When you start assuming, you are trying to avoid the complications. When you start avoiding the complications, you are leading to some answer, but not, that's not for the actual problem. That's for the wrong problem. So oversimplification or simplification sometimes lead to maybe some answer, but that answer is not for the problem for which you intended to solve. So the question is coming, if that is the case, if my problem, uh, 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 we, can, we cannot mathematically track, and if my problem is time varying, if my problem time varying means with the passage of the time it changes. Today the problem is something, after six months the problem changes its nature. Or it is operating in a noisy environment. Or for those people who understand little bit of uh, machine learning, uh, they, they know what is mean square error. If, you are, if I am not able to find out mean square error, if I am not able to find out the derivative of the function, if I am not to calculate dy by dx equal to zero to come to an optimal solution, then certainly I can't really depend mathematically. I need to think about beyond mathematics, beyond statistics, or in other words, beyond our conventional method, and that I call as alternate method. Two type of problems are there. So some problems are, are known as a computationally hard problem, and some problems are known as ill pose problem. Now, computational hard problems are large combinatorial optimization problem, multi-objective problem, multi-modal problem. Yes, we can solve and even computer also can solve. It may take little more time for me. It may take little more computing time or CPU time, but yes, we can definitely solve it. Like traveling salesman problem, we can solve it. Graph coloring problem, we can solve it. So definitely we can solve it. But there are some problems which are very difficult for computers to solve, but very easy for you and me to solve, human being to solve. Now, what are those problems? Those problems are known as ill-posed problems. For example, character recognition. You are signing in your handwriting. handwriting. I can recognize it. But if I give it to my computer, if my computer is not well-trained, well-managed, or the algorithm is not proper, it cannot face recognition. I understand that today some of my uh, my my students or my colleagues uh, uh, might be listening to this box. They will say, oh, so and so person, I have met and so and so and here. So face recognition. Speech recognition. When they see me, they may be recognizing. When they listen to me, then, but my machine cannot do this. Such kind of problems are known as ill-posed problems. Some of the problems which I said, computationally hard problem, 
as i said statistability problem traveling salesman problem i know many of our computer science teachers or student must be listening to me here and they might understand that what is this statistability problem or traveling salesman problem all these problems though it requires a huge soft space but still it can be solved in polynomial complexity or we call it np hard problems so such problems definitely can be solved but what about this yield force problems now to define this yield force problems little more in clarity let me come to two situation let's say i have a company and i have so many employees and i want to find out the average salary of my company uh, employee it is very simple i can just add the salary of each every individual and divide it by the number of the people working in my company then i get the average salary i don't have to apply many of my complex techniques it is so fantastic and so easy but if i change my situation now let's say i want to decide which are the employees i can give loan which are the good candidates for the bank loan it is not that straight forward i have to consider so many factors even if your salary is more or your stature is more sometime the bank loan may not be guaranteed because we need to see your past history we need to see how you have dealt with that particular loan or some previous loan how you have repaid it what is your credit in case of the uh, 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 market uh, uh, loan scenario or what you call civil score so when i want to take a decision regarding this who will be given the loan i don't think i can write any straight forward algorithm and ask my computer to solve it only a manager only a person having lot of experience a bank manager can take a decisions so therefore now we can think uh, it between well pose problem and ill pose problem well pose problem is a problem which has got some abstract model which describes the problem and if you have a model consequently you also have a solution method or an algorithm ill pose problems are the problems you do not have any model i cannot make a model for giving the loan i have to decide on my experience then i can give the mold uh are you am standing here right sorry anybody asking me anything i'm getting some noise uh, would you please uh, switch up the mic if you are engaged in some other thank you very much thank you. so when i'm trying to attack or trying to solve ill pose problem then what i need to do i have only few examples as a bank manager i have some examples that in my last 5 years of experience i have been able to give loan to x y z people but i have uh, discouraged or did not to give loan to k l m person now why i did it how i did it those are the examples i have so i have the data but it can be incomplete it can be even inconsistent so therefore i cannot use any sql statement there i cannot use mathematical average mean kind of stop there i need to think beyond my mathematics beyond my conventional you know algorithms or method and that's why i have to go for alternate solutions ill pose problem cannot be solved by if else statement however if i want to solve the if else uh, ill pose problem i can only solve by experience so a bank expert relies on his experience or previous success and failure of cases to any makes a decision so therefore all of us today are having a challenge to attack the ill pose problem we can't depend on our sql statement or eel statement in the c programming language because we can't really make a model so we have to depend on data past data archive data historical data from the data we have to create the data is our experience we have to do analytics on the data that's why nowadays lot of uh, you know uh, people are coming to the data science or data analytics so from the data we have to create our model our experience our solutions hence any algorithm which you design now i am coming to the solution any solution which you design any algorithm which you design use that should have those four important properties one is 
one is that my model or algorithm should be uh, learnable i mean it can develop some kind of uh, it it can it can be trained it can be trained it should be learnable like now i am speaking and many of students might they will be only hearing me they will not be listening to me my all this you know uh, discussion will be just uh, uh, falling on the deaf uh, uh, ear but if they have the characteristics of the learning if that student is learnable then definitely he can create a model out of it so most important thing that whenever you develop a solution that or deal with the dynamic environment it must be adaptable i can make it use it in different different situations it should not be fit to only this if i am developing a disease prediction app application software then it must be able to predict the disease of the malaria the disease of the uh, typhoid the disease of the viral fever if i say no my app will be only only dealing with malaria it cannot uh, detect uh, you know a, a typhoid and a viral fever then i don't think i can sell my model in the market nobody will come to buy so i it should be dynamic in nature it must be able to work equally well in every spheres if you remember in covid 19 that was a big problem the model which was designed by the uh, iit kanpur professor everybody they know that it was done with certain framework it was done with certain region taken into account the model which worked for india did not work for china did not work for canada did not work for mexico so it did not work for all those places why because the model has certain constraints the model though it is dynamic in nature but it will take certain parameters which are you know very uh, very much uh, uh, focused to the environmental issues but however our approach must be to design Uh, the model or solution which must be dynamic in nature third important thing that it must be robust in consistent data as a teacher when i go to the class i will be called as a robust if i am able to handle a noisy class if i claim to my principal or my vice chancellor sir give me a class which is noise free all students should be attentively listening to me then i can perform better i cannot be considered as a robust teacher if i am to be considered as a robust teacher i must be able to perform in a situation which is noisy i should be able to draw their attention i should be able to keep them quiet i should be i should be able to create inquisitiveness in their mind to ask question to me listen to me solve the problem then i become the robustness and that is what called robustness working in the noisy environment and able to handle with incomplete and even inconsistent data if i don't have enough data if i have partial data today many of you must be knowing those who are working in balanced data if i have imbalanced data i must know how to make it balanced so that i can go for classification or if i have inconsistent data in two record these are all not consistent or two table the data is inconsistent same data is inconsistent i should have the method of dealing with this this is called robustness and then last one is the very very important one that i must be my model must be able to answer in a reasonable amount of the time efficiency i can't say hey i am going to develop a excellent model but it may take uh, 10 years to give you the result i can develop i can i can create a covid 19 detection software but it will take 7 days time to detect whether you have covid or not you probably know when past this covid detection came it used to take 4 to 5 days time to identify whether you have covid or not and during that 4 to 5 days time there is a lot of uh, you know kind of uh, difficulties to the patient and uh, to the entire system and many gets affected later on when your rapid antigen test came we could know immediately within some seconds of course it came with a kind of another problem called false negative there were about more false negative but however it reduced but presently if you see there is so much of a, you know progress in the detection system of the covid 19 it doesn't take more than few hours to know 
So that's called the efficiency of our detection system has increased. So we need to tackle this real world problem and for that we must be able to give answer in a reasonable amount of the time and we call it efficiency. So these four characteristics one should have. And if you want to see these four characteristics in one particular method, classical method, traditional method, conventional method, probably it is very hard to get. For that reason, now people are looking beyond the horizon. They are looking beyond the classical or conventional method. And what are those conventional methods? We call them as subcomputing. We call them as computational intelligence. We call them as swarm intelligence. We call them as evolutionary computation. Even we can call those as machine learning, deep learning, you know, so on and so forth. Such are the technologies now becoming overwhelmingly popular among all the researchers and many of our BTEC students, PG students, PhD students and even practitioners in the industry are now knocking the door of this alternate solution. So in this short lecture, I wanted to create one awareness for this kind of uh, technology in which our BTEC student can do small work and can get a good publication and uh, present in such kind of IC3T conference in Kitts Warangal, which is one of the very good college. I know uh, when I was working in Andhra Pradesh, I have heard about this and uh, the department is doing excellent job in, uh, uh, in uh, you know, bringing many researchers into the single platform and uh, giving away some benefits to the listeners and uh, giving a scope for the collaboration and networking so that ultimately everybody you know wins in this kind of situations so there are some definitions of the computer intelligence and soft computing i uh, will not go through these definitions because these are all available in the wikipedia but one thing is that these kind of techniques having those four type of uh, properties in addition to that they also enjoy tolerant of imprecision even if you have some kind of imprecision they can able to do perform you know nicely and they can even work on uncertainty and also partial truth that means even if you do not know what will be the solution then these techniques can throw some idea about the solution which can be further processed and applied to my problem so computer intelligence uh, the main components of those are like neural computing evolutionary computing granular computing and techniques are all given in this and those are all inspired from some kind of metaphors so a neural network is inside from the human brain evolutionary algorithm is inside from the biological evolution that is darwin theory and Fuji said, Rob said, probabilistic reasoning, all these are inspired from our natural language. So all these are, you know, becoming very popular nowadays by many researchers and they are applying to the variety of the fields. These techniques are not limited to computer science or electronics now. These techniques have become a very popular technique in many of the engineering applications. When I say engineering, I refer to the mechanical, civil, electrical, etc. And even for the management and social sciences. I know many of the management people, they have used it for the profile creation, uh, for the portfolio management, for the stock market predictions. You know, they have used it. And even the social science people, are they are also using it for their data analytics. So friends, those who are listening to me online, they can, if they know, let them let them use it profusely. If they are new, let I urge them to start and learn more about it. So this is one more again, uh, you know, uh, definition and uh, classification of the computational intelligence. Evolutionary computers and uh, contributed originally three algorithms, developed three algorithms, and these are being used by my friends, my collaborators uh, in India and abroad, and that comes under the evolutionary computing. Uh, the structure of the evolutionary computing is very simple. You start with some kind of initialization, then you evaluate the solution, and then you go for the combination. 
selection and you continue this until you get your solution so look at when you start your initialization it is a random you randomly take some solution and then you start evaluating it and that's how it goes with the, because of the passage of the time i'm not going to uh, continue um, i think i started at 218 so you know please let me know when i have to complete it but quickly i'll go it and now this mostly we are using we are all into the cyber physical system and you can see every one of us whether it is uh, computer security or whether it is healthcare manufacturing military uh, or it is uh, uh, a kind of distributed network uh, or economics everybody we are concerned about uh, cyber security safety some kind of design methodology scalability validation synchronization synthesis so cyber physical system is the industry 4.0 and industry 5.0 today and every industry we are talking about this and our uh, sustainability goals are also talking about it so that leads to a uh, question that what really we are achieving we are trying to develop intelligent system our objective is we want to develop the intelligent system we this slide i think i will conclude i will not go further because of the shortage of the time so my our objective is to develop some system which is intelligent system Now how do i design the intelligent system what are the steps i have to follow if i want to develop a project the tech project and tech project or psd work on intelligent system design smart system design first thing is i have to collect the data how do i collect the data or digital signal processing after i collect the data what do i do with the data i extract the information i add some kind of meaning to those raw data i process those raw data for that i have to learn feature extraction neural network power learning data compression so on and so forth i'm sure many of my colleagues who are listening to me must have worked on this extraction of the information about the world after you have extracted shall i stop no i have to recognize the state of the world i have to see what is going to be the prediction statistical neural network recognition detection theory then i will be able to predict the behavior of the world for prediction i will have time series analysis dynamical system theory probability all that studies i have to do so that i can predict it after you predict it you don't stop because nobody will buy why why should i buy why should i believe what you say unless otherwise you have a reason about it so that's why today you must be knowing a new uh, era called explainable ai eai explainable ml eml explainable people are asking explain when i designed something for our university we have kims hospital i went to the doctor and i presented something called mosquito net one uh, technology or one uh, 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 deep learning technology which will uh, detect your parasite malaria parasite immediately the doctors asked me why should i believe why should we believe that your system will be giving me 97 percentage accuracy whether that person is infected with malaria parasite or not if i say no i develop i have done my deep learning i have used the transfer learning i have done the weight training and you see i am giving my data and it is giving the graph so and so and so forth so therefore my accuracy is 97 so you believe you take it nobody will buy it because i am dealing with healthcare healthcare is life and when it is life you must have the reason why should i do it so therefore i need to go for some kind of artificial intelligence and decision theory i need to prove them because of this reason because of i have to explain them that because of this explanation of my deep learning model this person is infected and it is called as he is having malaria and if i can convince them then probably they will buy it and immediately they will go for acting on that and communication with the world so friends i need these six steps unless these six steps are taken care i cannot really design my uh, intelligent system so for this i need to know all these technologies i need to work on these technologies if any of btech student listening to me they can take any one any one technology from this and work on any one bullet point 
and get the PhD. Even PhD scholar also can take any one of these bullet point and just predict or just region or just on the data sense the data and that itself will be definitely very careful. Today it is data intensive application. All of us we are talking about data analytics. All of us we are talking about decision science. So what are we doing? We are describing called hindsight. What happened? Then we are discussing what is happening oversight diagnostic. Then we are predicting future. What will happen? Then only we are giving pres prescription. How can I optimize it? If I can do all those four, then I can say I have a cognitive analysis or right side 360 degree view. What is the right action? What is the right decision? What to be taken right now can be done if all these analytics are done. So data analytics, decision science are nothing but descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, prescriptive and cognitive analytics. So today the market is towards that and I am working on particularly healthcare, all my work on the you know cancer or COVID-19 and all that for last so many years and on the images, on the data, etc. And we give a lot of people to this. So, a lot of in, uh, applications we have, you can see those applications are enormous, enormous application. It doesn't matter in which field you are. This is just to name a few and you can definitely work on this and you can get a lot of benefits. I think with this inspiration to every one of you, I'll try to close my talk because you might have the validatory session uh, lined up now and I will uh, hand over to the organizers if they are listening to me to take forward the next proceeding and uh, once again I thank the, the principal, uh, the modern HOD of the electronics department and uh, my very good friend Professor Sujan Raju and the management of uh, KITS Warangal for giving me the opportunity to be associated with this conference. And I had uh, uh, very much interest to uh, uh, come down physically, but for the constraints of the COVID, I really could not make it. I'm hoping forward uh, next time if I have uh, opportunity to visit the campus, I like to certainly visit and address all your students physically in the classroom or in your seminar hall and uh, maybe collaborate with all of you for doing some work. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Mm -hmm. I have given my last slide, my last slide if you see all the applications. Um, my last slide is full of applications. If anybody else, they can feel free to ask me. Otherwise, I hand over to you. Thank you. Uh, do I have to stay online or I can? Uh... Thank you, madam. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. I, Dr. C. S. Devi, Assistant Professor, EC Department and Co-Convener of IC3T 2022. Take this opportunity to welcome everyone to the valedictory ceremony of 4th International Conference on Computer and Communication Technology 2022, organized by Department of EC. ECE at Kakatiya Institute of Technology and Science, Warangal. 
the active participations from different organizations affirms the relevance and meaningfulness of this celebration let me acknowledge the presence of our eminent guests it is indeed it our pleasure to have among us us the chief guest of today's valedictory function mr k vijay kumar gupta ceo quality photonics and led chips indus private limited guest of honor mr k jagadishwar reddy garu managing director elegant embedded solutions private limited it gives me an immense privilege to invite dr t sunil kumar co convener ic3 2022 conveners of the program dr v raju dr b danalakshmi head of the department of ece and program chair of the con conference dr m raju m raju garu and the professor of ece dr b rama devi garu conference chair and principal professor k ashoka reddy garu to honor the dais thank you sir thank you ma'am i now request dr b danalakshmi to give brief report on today's conference thank you madam good afternoon to all it's my immense pleasure to present a brief report on activities conducted as a part of ic3t 2022 conference organized by department of ece kids w for the inaugural function of ic3t 2022 conference well, professor n v ramana rao garu director nit warangal graced the occasion as chief guest and gave the valuable suggestions to improve the quality of research and teaching yes, the most yes, respected sir. captain p yes. lakshmi kant rao garu chairman kids w bless the conference by spending his valuable time for the inaugural session and given motivational inputs respected shri p narayan reddy sir treasurer kids w also attended the inaugural session and added energy to the entire conference organizing the team dr k srujan srujan raju sir professor and head department of csc cmr cmr technical campus hyderabad attended as a guest of honor he is instrumental person in conduction of springer international conference ic3t 2022 he descri he described the process of selection of quality of papers dr b ramadev madam program chair and professor in department of ece enlightened the importance of conference professor k ashoka reddy sir our visionary principal and conference chain conference chair brief regarding milestone of the institute and sir is the main driving force in making this conference a grand success the success of the program is because of the untiring efforts of the conveners dr v raju reddy myself and co conveners dr ch sri devi dr t sunil kumar dr matini selatu rai professor herite watt university uk she has given a keynote addressed on the topic of signal processing and wireless communications dr suresh chandra satyapati professor and dean kiit bhuneshwar has given a keynote address on the topic of challenging problems and alternative solutions as a part of the conference we received 325 papers from the 19 states and 18 countries finally 53 papers got selected these papers segregated into four tracks based on specializations aml image processing communications and vls under track 1 13 papers were presented by the authors and the main coordinator for this track 1 is dr r srikant assistant professor 
Under Track 2, 13 papers were presented and the main coordinator of this Track 2 is Dr. C. H. Sri Devi, Assistant Professor. Under Track 3, 13 papers were presented and the main coordinator of the Track 3 is Dr. V. Raju Reddy, Assistant Professor. Under Track 4, 14 papers were presented and the main coordinator of this Track 4 is Dr. K. Ramudo, Associate Professor. Finally, the track based best papers will be announced by the delegate shortly. I congratulate all the participants and I thank each and every faculty who supported us in organizing the conference a grand success. I thank the editorial board members, session chairs, program chair Dr. M. Raju sir and Dr. B. Ramadevi madam, conference chair Dr. K. Ashoka Redigaru and management for this, for their continuous support. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to present a brief report on IC3T 2022 International Conference. Thank you. Thank you, Vanita. Thank you, Madam. I now invite Professor of ECE and Program Chair Dr. B. Ramadevi Garu to speak a few words on this occasion. Uh, good afternoon to you all. Uh, dear colleagues and the participants, uh, a warm welcome to you all to the valedictory function of IC3T 2022. I thank all the authors and participants for their wonderful presentation in Track 1, Track 2, Track 3 and Track 4. These two days we spend with pleasure which can be memorable for ever uh, at Kids Warangal. Dear participants, hope this connectivity with Kids W will continue in near future. We accepted 53 papers from India and abroad. Here are the details. From AP, we selected 8 papers. From Delhi, 2 papers. Gujarat, 1. Karnataka, 7. Madhya Pradesh, 1. Maharashtra 1, Odisha and Jharkhand 1, Pandicherry 1, Punjab 2, Rajasthan 4, Tamil Nadu 1, Telangana 11, Uttar Pradesh 3, Uttarakhand 2 and other countries 8. We are happy for your participation and support. We are coming up with, I am very happy to announce a good news for you all. We are coming up with another international conference within 3 months. So, please uh, be tuned with us. I thank my uh, co-editors, uh, Professor K. Ashok Reddy sir, Mantini Saradurai madam, Babi Jaj Garu and Dr. Srujan Raj uh, for their wonderful support. I thank our chief guest N.B. Ramana Rao Garu and uh, today's, uh, um, uh, today's speakers, Vijay, Vijay Ji and Jagdish uh, Garu and Satapati Garu for their wonderful support to this event. I thank the management and principal for giving me this opportunity. And I thank uh, our very dynamic head, Dr. M. Raju Garu for executing this program very successfully with all his team. And I thank co-coordinators co -co V. Raju and Danalakshmi and co-coordinators Sri Devi and T. Sunil Kumar and all the ECE faculty and staff for their wonderful support to this particular event. Thank you all and stay tuned with us. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Now I request Dr. M. Raju Karu, head of the department of ECE and program chair IC32 2022 to present a few words on this occasion. A very good afternoon and warm welcome to the valedictory session of uh, International Conference on Computer and Communication Techniques 2022. So, on behalf of Department of EC Kids Warangal, so I would like to extend my heartfelt uh, gratitude to the management and the principal sir for their cooperation and support throughout the conference. So, words are not enough to express our sincere gratefulness to our chief guest of the conference, Professor N. V. Ramana Rao sir, Director N. I. Varangal, for his valuable time and inspiring message. Further, my sincere thanks to Dr. Sujan Raju, Professor, Head of the Department, CMR Technical Campus, 
for an extraordinary coordination throughout the conference. My honest thankfulness to the keynote speakers for sharing their knowledge and enlightening us. So I would like to thank the authors for their participation. Without you, the event would not have been possible. Thank you very much once again. So I would like to take this moment to thank every committee, conveners, members who made this conference successful. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to have with us Mr. K. Jagadishwar Reddy Garu, Guest of Honor IC3 2022. May I kindly request Mr. V. Shoban Reddy to introduce Mr. K. Jagadishwar Reddy Garu. Good afternoon, one and all. This is Shoban Reddy, Assistant Professor in the Department of PC. It's my pleasure to introduce the Guest of Honor Jagdishwar Reddy Garu, Managing Director at Elegant Embedded System Private Limited. Sir has done his diploma in Embedded Systems and has completed bachelor degree at Kits Warangal from ECE in the year 2006. He has trained engineering students and faculty in the field of Embedded Systems. Sir has developed projects for CITD, Balnagar, Hyderabad and has started Elegant Embedded Solutions in the year 2012. And Sir has developed different projects using cutting edge te technologies like GSM, RFID, GPS and LoRa. And Sir has also developed real time solutions for BHCL, R&D, Balnagar in fuel cells and solar projects. Currently Sir is working as consultant in various engineering colleges to give R&D support to established incubation centers in the field of embedded systems and IoT domain. Sir is also consultant in Innova Technology, Malaysian based company. Sir is also a consultant in various startups in EV sectors. Sir is also developing various projects in for cement as well as oil industries. Sir is Sir has developed advanced and eco friendly embedded training birds. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request Mr. K. Jagadishwar Reddy Garu to speak a few words on this occasion. I request Mr. K. Jagadishwar Reddy Garu to speak a few words on this occasion. Sir, may I audible? Sir, your voice is not audible. Sir, you are on mute. Please. Please unmute, sir. Yeah, I am trying to unmute. But... Yes, sir, sir. Yeah. Uh, is this okay? Yeah, no? Yes, sir. It is audible. Yeah. I am uh, very sleepy bro, after me. Uh, it's, I know it's very difficult to uh, engage post lens where it is college, where it is in corporate. Anyway, I will try to give my insight. Uh, I mean, I don't know why he's breaking, I think. Yes, sir. Hello, is it clear? Yes, sir, Hello? it is clear, sir. Uh, just uh, my voice is down. Uh, well, the is not clear from your end, I think. Sir, your voice is clear. You can go ahead, sir. Hello? Sir, yes, 
sir your voice is clear sir you can go ahead sir okay it is just one it is another one hello okay जगदीश बाबू वी कैन हियर यू ये हाल हो सही मार रहा हूँ ओके ये नहीं टीसी टीसी सर विजुअल सर ओके सर यू कैन कंफ्यूज़ सर कंफ्यूज़ तो आंधी वी शिफ्ट चेक कर विंडो ओपन करते ओके इको सेलेक्ट विंडो ओपन करो सर डेस्कटॉप पे सेलेक्ट विंडो Uh, I am having this moment of the day not connecting properly. Um, only this miss only. Here, then uh, come back. Now, uh, if you only this only that the window is selected. That's the problem. Yeah. One of your other window you open. That the window open should be very fast too. Is this okay? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, just uh, I want to give a brief about uh, how the embed systems, uh, its applications and opportunities. Okay, uh, just I want to give a uh, brief about embed systems. Actually, uh, there is no proper definition to the embed systems. In my own experience, I came to know little definitions about this. It's a combination of hardware and software integration. It is performed to dedication a single task. And it says sometimes it is a part of larger systems, and there are multiple embedded systems can coexist in a single systems. And I will know the major difference between embedded systems and general computer. So embedded system has limited resources, not like general computer. So general computer may have more power, more uh, hard disk, more memory, uh, more peripherals. But coming to embedded system, it has some limitations in terms of. Uh, I have memory size and cost, and coming to performance and base system, so that is faster than general computers in particular applications. So this is a, a brief about between general system and embed systems. So coming to uh, applications uh, from our day life to if you start smartphones, smart TVs, refrigerators, washing machines. Nowadays in the EV sector, we have seen um, many applications in our cars and all. So we can find A to Z applications in embedded system, not like single applications. So you can find many applications here. And coming to application areas, suppose if you categorize in application areas, consumer electronics like smart TV, smartphones, eating machines, and etc. Coming to medical electronics, post COVID we are witness many uh, embedded devices and medical devices. Like SPO2 oxygen meters, pulse oximeter, scan machines, X-rays, ECG, uh, temperature detectors, etc. And same way, in automobiles. If you see in uh, in our car, there are hundreds of embedded devices in it, and battery management systems, cruise control, uh, anti-braking systems. Same way, in agriculture sector, recently a lot of embedded system developments are going on. Uh, smart irrigation, crop monitoring systems. Automatic seeding and fertilization machines, and the same way we are recently uh, seeing many advancements in the smart cities, like to give the quality of water and quality lifestyle uh, in controlling traffic effectively based on the traffic uh, in the real time domain and the best handling uh, smart transportations. So these are the various uh, things. And coming to technology, if you can see any embedded systems. There is the basic embedded system can have some inputs, outputs, and some interface. Let us say, suppose an AT machine has some keys, and then user interface has some display, and now we have some motors to uh, fetch the notes and all. The same way, if you take washing machines, the same has inputs and outputs. So this is a, if you take any embedded system, this is the basic structure of the any embedded systems. And so characteristic, um, if you take any. Embedded systems, as I mentioned earlier, it should be uh, application-specific 
Suppose if you take washing machine, its main duty is to wash the clothes, and it should interact with the real world. And based on the different size of the clothes and type of clothes, uh, quantity of the clothes, it should operate. And tightly constant means it has limitations in the size, power, cost, and all. And reliable, so it should be reliable means suppose if you consider 18 machines, we have to uh, relay the so 18 machines. Suppose if you want to draw some amount, it should be that much amount only. So that much reliable it should be there. And at the same time, the power is a major concern to the embed system devices. So if you want to design any embed system device first, we have to mention your specifications. Then you have to identify your hardware and software. So this is the major point here. So based on the availability and feature portability, the feature support you have to select. And because in the recent times post COVID, many companies are facing this uh, IC shortages. Because so, and your technology should be easily adaptable or compatible to new ICs and all. So this is a big uh, important cycle in the uh, design of hardware and software. And in generally. You can uh, start software and hardware parallel. You should not uh, start hardware first or software first like that. So, but the uh, relation between uh, software and hardware, it must be like a uh, between relation between like a couple. Sometimes hardware comes, uh, has to compromise and so sometimes software has to compromise. Suppose if you want to drive a motor speed, then you have to take care of uh, sophisticated software using PWM techniques and all. And in some, some applications, suppose you want to up, uh, control a high voltage or high voltage motors, there you have to use a smooth hardware to save your ha controller. So sometimes it is a, a good combination of hardware and software to get a beautiful product. And then you have to go for the testing of the unit and you have to plan your maintenance and upgrading also before launching your product. See, now in the mobile market there are many phones are coming, but if the maintenance and repair plan is not there, they are not getting succeeded. So that is the reason uh, those who have such plans, those only uh, will be available in the market for a long time. And generally, uh, this is the challenges we face in a embedded design. So what is the hardware power dissipation and what is the deadlines of that particular process and how easily you can flexible and upgrade to future enhancements. Suppose if you take any uh, controller, I want to more features in my next version. Is this controller applica uh, can be upgraded to that application or not? And the software tools, what I have used, can is supporting for the next version of controller or not? So these are the challenges we generally face in this. And if you conclude all these things in a simple matrix way. So what you have to concentrate is unit cost and the, what is the amount you are uh, spending on a single unit that is MRE cost, non-engineering cost. This will not to repeat and this should be as minimum as possible. Most of the cost it goes to the manpower and initial designing cost and this prototype cost and your product size, performance, power. So you cannot uh, satisfy all these factors in single uh, product. Suppose this, if you want the performance, it should be uh, more cost. Or if you want to less power consumption, again it should be more uh, cost. So you can only consider in uh, only two factors majorly. Only in rare case you can satisfy performance, power and cost. And how much time you are developing the initial prototype. And how early you are coming to the market. And how early your correctness and safety. Suppose recently we have seen in initial days of mobile phones got blasted and in recent electrical scooters it uh, got in fire. So how early they are correcting their batteries and their systems. Based on that their product will succeed in the market. So these are the uh, things you have to uh, take care of in your design. And coming to about our profile, I just tell you to time for time, just uh, keeping our company profile, what we are doing. Uh, this is just, uh, we do manufacturing services, product R&D consultant, uh, just PCB design services, both firmware and hardware design and complete product development. And we will do re-engineering for your existing product. 
and we also support two sort of concept development for the startups to reduce their initial cost and we also supply manpower and we also providing a sophisticated and the user friendly toner boards for the train services and we have oem oem services and we expertise in all the latest gpt lower or gsm gps and all the controllers from 8 bit to 32 bit and some of our products in the cement industries and the wages in the oil and the cement industries in other uh, factors we uh, based led boards and elevator controllers are recently we are updating to access controller rfid and other real solar panels and uh, this fuel cell voltage controlling systems and brand printers in beverage industries so here i am just giving a small case study how the technology is uh, using to improve our product just to, our main aim of this any product is to reduce the manpower to make it automatic we want to improve its efficiency we want to maintain and control the method very easy and we want to reduce its power consumption or power wastage and we want to self identifying the problem of that uh, a particular product see here i'm giving a case study of all these things just consider uh, how street lights getting operated in still in or in india in majority cities and minority villages it is getting operated by manually and most of the times they are, uh, forget to switch off even in the morning and afternoon also so we have lot of power getting wasted here uh, some even in summer we don't need the uh, lights till 7 o'clock or we don't uh, lights in the early morning 5 o'clock so then in some areas we gave us small solution and we have replaced this solution light based street lights so they connected light based on the light intensity the lights getting on and off but the problem with this is still uh, in the midnight and in the some areas we don't need the lights at all because uh, no person should come in that area so then someone came with another solution with only time based so in the 6 to 6 morning 6 evening 6 to morning 6 they are on but this is also not giving a good power saving option because uh, we don't require same timing in all the seasons based on the summer or winter we, we, we want to change the timings i want to change the timings it's a big a task then the combined combination of ldr and rtc will come into picture but in a festive season and in other se seasons it will not give satisfactory results and controlling is also a major task in this then we are replacing the lamps with LED lights to save the power. So this is a, a great usage in power saving. Then we are adding, we are also seeing some are using solar for the LEDs. Then the major part comes now with the latest technology, IoT based street lights control. Means uh, through remote place you can control. So you can assume how much manpower you can save with this. And uh, one of the beauty of this beauty feature of this product is suppose any particular light is not working. So in in the present case, someone has to see or uh, we have to report to the government uh, the electricity department. But this system automatically identifies and informs to the concerned department so that they can change it uh, as soon as possible. So just assume how the technology uh, is updating with the product is evaluating. So this is a simple case study and uh, coming to the uh, latest technologies. So we are seeing IR, but probably we are using BLV, LoRa, Wi-Fi, Li-Fi. Uh, just we have seen Bluetooth only one channel. Means suppose if you are connected to Bluetooth, if another person wants to connect to that Bluetooth, someone has to disconnect first. Then but latest technology, you can connect to multiple devices. And we are seeing artificial intelligence. Uh, there artificial intelligence everywhere in embedded also and in all the fields. Suppose in, in the future, if you want to come home before you come to your home, you want to uh, switch on the AC or the food should be ready. But where artificial intelligence also calculate your uh, distance to the home and you are coming with food or without food based on that it will automatically switch the things and based on the climate conditions shall I switch on the AC or not all this taken care with this artificial intelligence uh, algorithms 
and there are a lot of challenges in artificial intelligence also. Suppose uh, you are coming to your home and the AC should on at some particular temperature, but you, uh, that we have to find you, which person coming, you are your partner. So you may sometimes we have different temperatures. So this is some challenges are there. And this is a brief about uh, Internet of Things and it is the uh, latest buzzy words. It's everywhere. You can take any product. IoT is default and in, in industries where we are using to monitoring the machines earlier we don't know uh, the, how when the machine will going to uh, in not working condition so with the IoT technology we keep monitoring the machines how many hours it is running so we have to identify when it has to get server, uh, service and all so coming to the uh, business so it's a student's point of view those who want to come to this uh, embedded systems field, they, they should tie off this digital uh, online electronics, the ability to perform basic electronics debugging and troubleshooting, just how transistor works, how regulator works and all, and competence in C programming languages, it's enough. And if you go for higher end after, we, we can go through this RTAS real-time operating system also. And uh, the common thing is you should explore knowledge on microcontrollers. And what, just how to learn, but, but most of the students just not learn in a proper way. You should understanding the basic principles of electronics like reading the data sheets. Suppose if I ask you to uh, get a mobile, everyone give 10 up 20 specification. What is the size, a display size, a pictures, resolution, a memory and different options are the OS. But if I ask any students that what is the transistor you have used, but most of the students are unable to answer that answer. They simply know PN player and PN, but they don't know the make the manufacture of the transistor, the IC the collector current and the base current and uh, that's its properties. So these are the things they have to go through the things. And they have to they should not escape from the doing projects. They think that okay we can do, uh, go through MS or anything. But at one point you have to do the projects. So that you start from the college itself. Don't escape from the projects. So learn the C language if you want to get into the embedded systems. And don't use any open source libraries or open source hardware. Because many students are simply using Arduino, Raspberry Pi. They don't give any exact knowledge, insight knowledge. So focus both on hardware and firmware. Because in the, if you stick to only firmware or hardware, uh, what happened in your uh, just corporate life? You can, suppose if your software is okay, but other person may blame you, your system is not running properly. So you should have a speed tester, suppose if you, if you want to test a bulb or motor, further you don't prepare any software knowledge. First, you, you have to know how to test that motor without any software. Then you try with your software. So it's better to have both hardware and firmware at least a little. And uh, the beauty of the embed system is every product is a challenging product, so if you have experience with 10 products or 100 products, if you come with other product, uh, it's again a new product to you. So it's always, a, so be passionate to in, uh, to survive in this uh, embedded domain especially. So my uh, special request is just to, we are uh, speaking a lot about making India, but presently we are seeing only assembling in India. So, so to make in India, just the colleges also produce just not graduate, but also lot of products with the, along with the students. And uh, we are uh, just witnessing many startups. So we have to develop more such startups. We have to establish more incubation centers uh, so that the faculties and engineering students both can work together. And presently we are facing that IC manufacturing in India uh, because we are not getting many components that is manufactured in India. So when the manufacturing is happening in India, the real making in India will happen. And so, uh, this is the end of the session. Uh, thank you. I uh, am a little speedy <laughs> due to time constant. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech on embedded system and its application and latest technology, how to use and how to start up a, uh, in, your, in our college. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. The fragments of flowers spread only in one, di wide one direction 
of the wind but goodness of a person spreads in all directions we are delighted to have with mr k vijay kumar gupta garu as a honorable chief guest of the valedictory ceremony i like to call mr ch pavan kumar to introduce the our honorable chief guest mr k vijay kumar gupta garu Good evening one and all this is CH Pawan Kumar assistant professor department of EC it's my pleasure to introduce today's chief guest Mr K Vijay Kumar Gupta sir he is a founder of India's only LED manufacturing uh, plant in 1987 quality photonics and LED chip industry private limited he is a gold medalist engineering scientist from IIC Bangalore with internship at Bark and TIFIR and served as scientist in cel delhi he was trained in japan for tungsten filament technology his companies produce leds led segment display and power leds for lightening as well as special spectrum leds for spectrometers he served as president of electronic industries association at national and state level he is a partner in eu project eu project h2020 with six eu universities and bits pilani goa on multi technology drinking water solutions for four communities for four years he supports new startups and applications in novel applications of leds his company supports up to 100 intents for on job experience as and industrial visit facility for the engineering colleges from all over the india he, to expose them to the led component prod, uh, production technology he was been awarded the best ssi entrepreneur in 1994 by hyderabad management association and best product award in 1995 by ou graduate association exhibition society and the best industry award in 2001 by industry department government of ap thank you sir now i request mr k jagadishwar reddy garu sorry sir now i request mr k vijay kumar gupta garu to inspire the gathering with your valuable words Oh, okay. Uh, should I start now? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, thank you, kids, and thank you for this wonderful opportunity to interact with all of you. Uh, I think the whole program was very well done with excellent speakers. Just had the uh, advantage of listening to Mr. Jagdish, and then we really talked about components, and then. Uh, much more information which the students need to know so i'm uh, very happy for that <laughs> and uh, let me start my presentation i think i'll share uh, i hope i'm ready <laughs> Right. Uh, now I can see only my uh, thing. I cannot see your reactions, so you should pardon me. Uh, I am Vijay Kumar Gupta, President LNC uh, uh, Electronic Industry Association, and also Managing Director of Quality Photonics Private Limited. And uh, <coughs> I am on several. Uh, Our groups from the Ministry of Electronics. Oh. 
So I am not able to do that. Right. <coughs> yeah, we have a group of companies manufacturing LEDs for last and lighting for last 60 years. And, uh, the light LEDs manufacturing has started about 35 years ago. Uh, after I did my engineering from Indian Soft Science Bangalore, where I was successful in making the LED, producing the LED itself on the campus, thanks to the internship at uh, DRC, and TFR, and Tata R&D. So, uh, because I wanted to learn, uh, we were already a lighting manufacturer at that time, so we thought that LEDs will uh, observe the lighting. So I wanted to learn about LEDs, and there was obviously even now there is no college for LEDs, no course, so at that time I was wondering how to do that. So I did lots of uh, elective courses from Physics department, chemistry department on material sciences, an electrical engineering student, and did a lot of electronics courses on EC department. And being a business uh, man's family, I did a lot of courses from management department too. I was able to successfully complete 20% uh, more than required courses and uh, also carry four out of our CGPA and uh, 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 the college doctor, and that was a very satisfying part of my whole life. Uh, why are LEDs so important? One is they don't have any mercury like your tube lights and CFL. Uh, and you know that normal incandescent bulb is very, very inefficient. Just 12 lumens per 1 watt of power it gives you. And it's only 3% of the electrical energy is converted into light energy, 97% is heat. It's a real criminal after we, you spend so much of. Uh, <coughs> Uh, fossil fuels, you create uh, uh, climatic uh, harmful gases, greenhouse gases, and then ultimately what you are doing, again, throwing out 97% of that power into the, uh, and the heat. So uh, that's why when the LEDs came up, they were also very good. So LEDs are uh, 10 to 12 percent, 12 times more uh, efficient. So instead of 3 percent light, they give you 35, 40 percent light. Uh, 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 of, of for 35 to 40 percent uh, conversion into net conversion, that's a very good thing. So we have a uh, this very efficiency. Though right now we are selling at 160 to 200 lumens per watt. Theoretically, we can produce up to 350 lumens per watt. And the tunable CRI, color rendering index. That means you can see the quality of the light when. Uh, <coughs> Uh, you buy a cloth in the shop, you see the color and you go out in the sun, the color difference because the, uh, the room light didn't have blue color in it. They do not reflect the blue light from the cloth. So that, and when you go out, the blue color also comes up and then it's, you see the combined experience, visual experience. So the color rendering, the spectral content of the uh, light is very, very important. Then uh, also we can change the spectrum. Uh, in the LEDs, uh, spectrum distribution, you can have uh, all red dominated, you can have blue dominated, you can change any color. And then you can also control the beam distribution by changing the blue and also add iron optics. Uh, so, normally you would have seen a 5 mm LED on the left side and on the, and the power LED on the right side. Uh, the basic LED looks like this. It has got a two leads. Uh, uh, which are uh, which used to be iron leads, and then uh, very low current is power produced, and there's a chip there, and then there's a wire bond, and then the whole thing is encapsulated in solid epoxy. And solid epoxy has a higher refractive index than LED, so it is able to extract the light out. Otherwise, you would have seen a phenomenon called total internal reflection, and a lot of loss of light. And then also, you can see that there is a shape for the epoxy, uh, which is such, put such a way that most of the light is carried forward. In the olden days when we were making very low efficiency LEDs, this was very important to get all the light in the front direction. But this particular LED would not show any light on the sides because all the side light were are also getting affected. <laughs> but uh, is, is the chip so simple? No, it's very complicated. Uh, it's not just PN junction diode. 
So it's got a <coughs> anode on the bottom, then you have got a substrate, then you have got an N layer to, and then you have activity where uh, holes and electrons combine, and then there is a P layer. And over it, there is again a wire bond and all. Even here also, it looks receptive. Then if you see the structure inside, it's very, very, very complex. Lots of patterns are there to improve the flow of the current, the uh, electron hole combination efficiency, the heat, then uh, lattice matching, uh, substrate uh, support, removing the substrate, making it more transparent, making the current spread. So, so many patterns are there on the LED materials. So, you can see that this very, very complex. So many layers are there. And then uh, when uh, the blue LED was invented by Shuji Nakamura, he was selected for this Nobel Prize three years ago. The original invent of LED never got a Nobel Prize. This guy st struggled for 30 years, 20 years uh, to find how, we know that Indian gallium nitride has a band gap, which is emits blue, uh, equals to blue energy. But we didn't know how to make a PN junction diode out of Indian gallium nitride or gallium nitride. So he was the one who succeeded in making a metal organic vapor phase <coughs> MOCVD, chemical vapor deposition system, and then uh, history was made. It so happened that uh, this particular LED was so efficient that LED soon graduated from being indicators to illuminators. Indicator means when you look at the light, you will see it, but it cannot illuminate the rest of the room. But illuminator is something which produces so much photon <laughs> on that light can uh, fall on objects, reflect and come enter your eye and you can see it's lighting. So it's a revolution and that's why he was given the Physics Nobel Prize. And then once we have a, see the LEDs what we use are just um, 10 milliamps, 20 milliamps in those days. But then now you want a incandescent bulb of 60 watt equivalent. So let's assume that uh, LED is very efficient, so we just need 6 watts of power, uh, LED power. So to, but if you feel 6 watts is huge current compared to uh, a, a, a 20 milliwatt LED in those days. So a lot of heat is generated. As I said, 35% is uh, efficiency, so 60% still remains as uh, heat. And this heat has to be conducted away from the chip. So that's why we have a, something called a heat sink. Uh, uh, there is a, a slug here below the chip and there is a new construction. So in the earlier versions, this was not there. Right? So uh, this supports the path and you can see it is extended ex extra under the chip. So this uh, heat from this chip goes into the slug and from here to the copper track on your PCB. And we have something called uh, iron metal co uh, MCPC, metal core PCB from there to the outer aluminum body. And then uh, you can see how the LED was. In earlier days, we were using iron leads, uh, so the thermal resistance was very high. That means, uh, if you put one watt of power, the junction would go up by 250 degrees centigrade. Of course, we never had uh, seen LED melting at 250 degrees centigrade because we never pumped one watt. We were only pumping 2 volts into 10 milliamps, that is 20 milliwatts power, right? So only 5 degrees was increased in the temperature. Then we added uh, copper uh, leads in place of iron to improve the uh, conductivity, heat conductivity. Then we added uh, uh, extended lead frame so that, so that the heat can be radiated out. Then we added a slug under the chip uh, and then uh, to take the heat directly out. And then we added a metal core PCB below that to further spread the heat. So from uh, 250 uh, thermal resistance of 250 degrees per watt come down to 6 degrees per watt. That means if I pump 1 watt of power into this, the temperature of the jet chip will go up only 6 degrees. That's a fantastic, right? And then this is how the, if you, uh, is, uh, how it looks like, if you, this is a cross section. So you see the star form, then on which there is a LED star pack. And then uh, uh, in the center, chip, a low material called metal, right? And that metal is touching the copper track, and the copper track is uh, on the uh, aluminum substrate. And you can see that between the copper, the, there is a dielectric material between the 
problem. And apart from that, we also make sure that the, uh, the heat from the copper track to the uh, LED uh, uh, is a very good contact by using a TIM. What is TIM? The thermal interference material. See, when you put two surfaces together, you will find some air gap in between. And this air gap is a very bad conductor. To remove that air gap, you have to add a alumina uh, uh, type material in a, a medium. And that's what being uh, done in this thermal. That's why you see, when you open your power supply in your lab, on the back side, you'll see a big uh, heat sink, uh, long heat sink. And if you see underneath, there's a white paste uh, uh, applied between the transistor, a oval transistor, power transistor, to the heat sink material, right? So it's a thermal interface is very important. And if you see the dramatic effect because of this, adding a heat, uh, therm, uh, heat slug under the chip. See, on the left side, you'll see the standard 5 mm degrees. They don't have any heat uh, sink material embedded within the body. And then you can see that the uh, light intensity, see on the left side you see light intensity falling from 1970 to 50 and as the time passes on the right side you see 10,000 hours, 20,000 hours, 30,000, 40, 50,000 hours. So you can see that in the uh, red lights they are all tracking the uh, 5 mm LEDs, standard 5 mm LEDs. So the life average life at where the light comes down, the LEDs don't fail, they just deteriorate in the brightness. So the when the brightness comes down to 50 percent, the life would have been only 5,000 hours. Whereas the same thing for the uh, power LEDs, uh, now we don't even wait for the 50 percent life to come down, the brightness to come down, we start discarding it at 70 percent itself. So, and then there you can see after 50,000 hours, the Normally, I uh, recommend that the LED be changed, your light will be changed so when you are reading or doing any task. The brightness levels are important. You cannot, uh, instead of 200, uh, 300 lux, you can't say 3 into 7, 200 lux level, you will be fi not finding comfortable and you will be doing an inefficient job of whatever attack you are doing. So, the LED life is uh, taken at L70, it's called L70. And you can see that. Some of the best makers, they can reach even few lakhs of hours. And even the worst guy who doesn't know how to make good LED or doesn't use the right materials, then even in this case, the life is L70, 30 hours. The structure makes a dramatic change, difference. And this is how the heat sinks look like. Uh, you, all of you are quite familiar with them. And this is a thermal image of that. So how the heat, the chip is on the top. And you, you can see under the free, things right under the LED are very hot. And then there is a uh, time slope, the temperature goes down. And uh, this is the general circuit of it. One is the thermal circuit which we talked about, other is the electrical circuit. You can see that uh, LED is here, then the thermal interface material, then uh, metal core PCB. And then again for the thermal interface and the heat sink. And uh, electrical power comes from the uh, supply to the LED and then comes out to that. And then here what we have called a electronic driver. Why do we need an electronic driver? Because LEDs are normally 3 volts, whereas your power supplies are 220 volts or your power uh, battery is uh, 12 volts battery which varies from charge to discharge from 11 volts to 14 volts. You have a lithium battery which goes from uh, 3.7 to 4.2 volts. So it requires some kind of electronic uh, uh, circuit which will take care of these variations in the supply and keep the light output constant on the LED. In fact, it means to keep the current constant in the LED. So we call this as constant current drivers. Right? This is one word you have to know. All the uh, or whatever LED light you open, they all are driven by constant current driver. So it's SMPS where the feedback is taken from the small resistor in series with the LED. So when it is proportional to the current flowing through it, and that feedback is taken to the SMPL back, and then it makes a correction so that the current is kept constant. So it is a very important one. All your chargers, all your phone uh, and everything, power electronics is very, very important. There are millions of these power electronics are required, and then they have to be redesigned for different shapes, sizes, and ratings, and different input voltages. 
So it's a great line for all of people in the poor line to uh, this and I think a lot of you will find jobs there. This is a typical uh, LED manufacturing uh, clean room area. It's a semiconductor, right? So here what we do is we put the on the left machine here, the chips are small chips. 0.2 mm, you can't even see with the eye. 0.2 mm, it has got a 0 0.05 mm, two pads. One which we put here is a 0 0.025 wire mm, wire as bonding. All that is done microscopically. This is the first stage where only chip is added to the lead frame, and this is the second stage where the wire is added to the lead frame, and then the, the left one is the wire we do the testing in the whole lead frame. And then here is where we fill the epoxy to protect the wires, uh, very thin wires there. And then the, you have a machine which do the binning, it will measure. But all these machines they produce around 50,000 LEDs one hour. So the machines have to test, so they all blow them, they check, the, they capture the light from the LED, they capture the voltage from the LED, and then decide. Uh, Voltage 1, voltage 2, voltage 3, color 1, color 2, color 3, and then it just one and then make combination of them and then put them in the right bins. So we have 19 bins, all light is, uh, all LEDs are sorted 19 bins, and you get whatever bin you pick up, you will get all uniform voltage or uniform light or uniform color. And how is the white LED made? Now, how does the LED work? We, uh, the electrons get excited. In the gallium matter material, they go up to uh, the next orbit, and uh, when they uh, the water, uh, they take electric energy and get excited and go up. And, but it's not a stable place, right? So they want to fall back to their normal state. So what are energy they have taken to go up? That they emit as a photon. Sometimes as heat, and uh, uh, sometimes as photon. So the more efficient ones, the optical efficient combination, we call it. They emit more photons than uh, heat, and then that's how we get LED basically. And so LEDs are so that means every material has a fixed band gap, so it will always give one color depending on the carriage. The lower mid band gap it will give red. The next higher one will give yellow output. The next higher one uh, this thing. And by using combination of two, three, three, five compounds, group three and group five compounds, we can get any color from any wavelength. 600, 610, 620, uh, 630, 590, 550, uh, any wavelength we can get easily. Uh, so at this chip stage, we uh, adjust the ratio of the uh, two compounds to get different color tuning. So then you get only single color. How do we get the white color? Uh, that I think I explained now. See so how. Normally, we get white color by RBG, RGB. All your TV or your cell phone, uh, the display, they work with this. They got three uh, uh, very tiny emitters there, and then uh, one by one they glow, and then depending on how much intensity you get each of these colors, you can get different colors, and one of them go equally, you get white color. There is this one more nice technique where you can add two complementary colors. That means, uh, in our case, we are very just in blue because it's very efficient. So with blue, if you add yellow color, then it will give you white effect. So there's one way. So we have to apply two LEDs of white, and, uh, blue, and yellow to get white color. Other trick is we coat this uh, uh, blue LED with a phosphor. Sorry. We coat with a phosphor, and this phosphor, what it does is converts part of this blue into yellow. If output and then the combination of this yellow and blue. It is a blue line is a spectrum without the phosphor on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then what our phosphor is it takes part of the energy, absorbs it and converts it to other co colors, and you get what is called a white spectrum. This combination where you see 700 nanometers, you can see 600 nanometers, you can see 500, you can see 400, all of them together, your eye will feel it as a uh, you, I will not see them in neutral colors, but it will see it as a white color. And uh, uh, this is the color chart, CIE 1931 color chart, where every color can be measured in terms, uh, because matrix is a science, science requires everything to be measured properly. 
you cannot say that it is slightly reddish blue and all. You have to give them some number for the XY table. So here you can see that 0 0.1, 0 0.8 is green. Then you've got 0 0.3 by 0 0.3 is white. And you've got uh, 0 0.6 by 0 0.3 is uh, orange. And you've got 0 0.7 by 0 0.2 is red. Then you can get, express any color like that. Right? <coughs> and uh, this is something one. So, yeah. Uh, now, uh, all the radiation, all the colors equally. And uh, what you see in front of you is the high sensitivity. That means we see green as one, and whereas we see red and blue two as one by 100, then power minus two. So that means even if you give three one watt lights of red, green, blue, or I will see it as a greenish 100 times, and then with a little bit of red and blue. So this total effect is called uh, conversion effect. What it sees is uh, uh, done as uh, lumen uh, uh, units. Uh, visual units and uh, it is called lumens basically. So milliwatt is that becomes a lumen. So and that's what you said, yeah. And uh, otherwise, you get and this because we don't really have the length required uh, because there was on the most efficient. Uh, Exciting one is this. LEDs have opened up a huge uh, area of science, research, and application. You can see on the left, you can see some names here. Disinfecto UVC LEDs, party growth full spectrum LEDs, fast pure UV LEDs, insect all UVBS. I think the name, what we are given, will be giving you some hint about what it does. Skin medical UV LEDs, inspector UV LEDs, LA free UV LEDs, PC Go, fish culture visual LEDs, vitamin D medical LEDs, and studio light LEDs. So, what is manufacturer UVC? You all know recently during pandemic, we all use some uh, ultraviolet lights to clean up uh, your uh, groceries and all. But this light is uh, kills. Uh, all the bacteria and virus instantly, but it is also cancerous and not suitable for human beings' presence. So, what our equipment would have purchased, they would have an automatic system to switch off the moment you touch it or open it. And also, as, as soon as you step into the hospital or room, it gets shut off. Shut off. It is uh, what uh, Mr. Jagdish has said. So, there is a optical sensors or proximity sensors, I think, and they take care. They take over the control. So the, all these things require very sophisticated controls to keep them safe from the from the human beings. Then we have got uh, uh, horticulture. I think all of you heard about uh, indoor vertical farming. So uh, you can grow a th uh, crop which takes three months in sunlight in two uh, in one month. If you do it indoor, you will need LED light, and also it doesn't require all the sunlight. It just requires blue and red. So violet color it does, and also by adding a shot of far red or infrared, you can induce antioxidants, you can induce uh, nutrients, you can induce change in color. See the colors in nowadays in the salad, in the lettuce and all, you can see very exotic color. They are all because of the uh, effect of the LED. Then you have fast cure UV LED. So uh, in the Printing industry, you have seen very beautiful glossy prints and all. But what happens when one paper falls on other paper, they get smudged. So you need this uh, inks to dry. But then to dry, you have to use heat. It's not possible to heat them. So what you do is you make a ink composition such a way that the moment the UV light falls on them, they uh, they interconnect each other, they link uh, the molecules, and then becomes hard and then dries up. So it's, a, it's called curing, we call them curing, UV curing. But these are all not uh, UVC, not dangerous light, but this is 385, 365, 400 nanometer light. We can produce and give to you. The insect called UVC. See, there are certain UV lights and UV lights and some wavelengths are very, uh, uh, they like them, they are, their eyeballs are tuned for this. So they, whenever they see this light, they come there 
and then we use the trap or zapper, uh, uh, we kill them. It's skin like. So you can see that uh, many people have white patch on their hands. So this vitiligo uh, uh, can be cured by exposing the skin to 311 nanometers of UVC light. So again, so there's a medical application there. Then if you see D, you know you see vitamin D. See, we all need vitamin D to make calcium absorb into our uh, bones and then make them strong. But what is the right time for vitamin D? Uh, this is actually 330 nanometers. And 330 nanometers get absorbed in the atmosphere very fast. So in the early mornings, when the skin uh, light, uh, sunlight has to travel very long distance tangentially, they all get absorbed. Only after 10 o'clock and before 3 o'clock, the light becomes almost vertical onto the earth. So the path passing through this atmosphere is less. So this uh, far, uh, vitamin D, 330 nanometers light will reach the earth's surface. But 10 to 3 is very hot time. So we all can't withstand in the uh, tropics. So best thing is you can buy vitamin uh, 300 nanometer LEDs from us, make a nice booth and then make people sit there for 10, 15 minutes and give them the vitamin D dose. And then best part is it doesn't have any heat. It just gives you pure radiation and then uh, you can, depending on the people and all their condition, you can increase, decrease the doses and all. That's one uh, good business opportunity for some of you. Uh, then we have an inspector light. light. See, uh, uh, the lots of equipment used in defense and the things, they uh, should be fail-proof. And very fine cracks also can ultimately give some kind of fatigue and a break. In these fine cracks, whatever way you try, you will not be able to see. So what we do is uh, we heat them, embed them in uh, some special uh, fluorescent liquid and the fluorescent liquid penetrates uh, those fine lines but it's not visible. Only then we put on this 385 to nanometer powerful light on it and then we are able to see that fine line fluorescing out and you can locate there's a defect on the shaft or uh, part. So that, that's very important for uh, things. So for lots of people use that for inspection. Uh, Non-destructive uh, testing is perfect. Then LA free. You have seen that there are a lot of fish farms, but we also see many people making a lot of losses. That's because they get infected or the uh, the food is being eaten away by the algae there. So, and the uh, fish don't become strong enough to fetch good uh, price. So, for that, this kind of UV lights can kill them very well. So, simply for the grow and then the studio light. Just now we talked about color rendering index, right? So, uh, if the, there is an art director who, who visualizes all the colors, like in your Bahubali or somewhere, they are very beautiful combination of colors. And then all that color has to be captured by your camera only if all that, that particular wavelength falls on it. So, your student lights have to be very high quality, so we call it 95 to 100 CR color rendering index. But every color is present in the source and that light falls on the uh, skin or clothes or the settings and then that light goes into your camera, a very high intensity, high density CCP cameras and then gets captured. So again, these are very important in the shops also, when they are showing your clothes or fruits or something, they need a very good quality uh, light to bring it out properly. Sorry That's for the right. disturbance, sir. How yeah. much time to conclude, sir? So, just now we spoke about UV light. I think you are all quite familiar. How do the UV light uh, kill the bacteria? It sir. enters the D DNA and then breaks them. But also, it damages the cell membrane. And then, uh, LEDs are better than uh, UV tubes. Sir, can you conclude uh, within uh, five minutes, sir? Yeah, yeah. If you want to close, uh, with you close it, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Then we have got uh, circadian rhythm. See, our body uh, is sir, your sunlight. slides are not moving, sir. Sir, please show the slides, sir. Yeah, yeah. Conclusion right. slides, sir. So, I can't hear you because voice is very bad. Uh, so, the sun, we get up with the sun and then sleep with the sun. 
So you can see the, how the body keeps reacting. Uh, at 2 o'clock we are in deep sleep, at 4.30 minimal body temperature and then 6.45 uh, so the sharp and BP, so you should not check your BP in the morning. Then uh, at 7.30 the secretion of melatonin ceases. Melatonin is actually sleep inducing. That's why they tell you not to read or see the uh, monitors in the night. That's because the, all the uh, monitors they are made with uh, blue LED. So the melatonin will disturb your eyes. So all these things become very important. And then, uh, uh, so the LEDs can, you can see how the sun color changes during the day, right? And our eye also, our body also starts reacting to that, thanks to the effect on the, our pituitary glands and other glands, the whole body system. This you cannot uh, Comes body and all. Then, uh, then here what we use in gamers, we can uh, use this light to improve them. And uh, there's something called moon lighting. So that the, when you are going in an aeroplane, you can change the colors to mimic the day where it is, and then uh, you can make them induced to sleep and all. This is what we talked about. A uh, plan to relax. So you need uh, only blue and red mainly. And uh, you can see that every color has an effect here. This is a wet spectrum. Something to produce chlorophyll, so that is blue and red. Something to produce catenoid, something to produce pyrophyll. Uh, so every color has a function. And this is uh, how the insects see the light. They can only see particular wavelengths. You can see the spectrum. So, and on the left side, you can see the insect trap, right? And this is the various spectrum of various LED lights. Observe, and then the best part is this uh, continuous disinfection lighting, which we have recently discovered. It is the first time in India, first time in the world. It's a, a visual light which kills COVID and bacteria in the air, and it doesn't harm you. So, and it can be kept full, full time on. It helps the uh, removal of black fungus in the ICUs or any other thing. You can see that uh, normally two million people get affected when you go to the uh, Hospitals during the USA, in India it's much more. And of which one lakh people die also. Uh, so it's all because there is some other fungus when you are taking your uh, 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 medication, your body immunity comes down so badly that any simple uh, fungus can attack you and then make you sick. Right. So this is a product called Ray Pure, which we have recently, and we all of you can go and see in the and it's a very clear way in which it uh, works on the thing. And the, the, it is tested at CCRMB, the Center for Central Security. So you can see that the rate for non uv light and it has been tested on live hours go to and in 15, 30, 45 minutes. You can see that in 15 minutes, the uh, soft strength has come down by 50% blue color. And then in 15 minutes, it has come down by 95%. This is on the left side reduction, right? And these are other things. Uh, it's safe for breathing. And these are all the uh, bacteria that have been tested on it. So that's how it is. So that brings us to the end of it. So thank you so much. Right? Sorry, sorry, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your influential message on advantages of LED chip frame and uh, how to add a chip and why to the LED frame. Actually, sir, in uh, February 2020, our uh, receipt faculty visited your company, sir. Yeah, my factory is open three five days for students' visits. It doesn't require my permission to the people to take care of that. And then we have uh, several uh, internships open, several uh, projects open. So they are most welcome. And this is because of my internship, which I did at, there, there is no LED industry in India. Because just because of my internship, which I took seriously in the BRC, I was able to make the LED in the chip, small chip from there, and then worked as scientist in CL Delhi for three three years uh, to develop LEDs 40 years ago. And then that's why, you, if you take your uh, uh, product work or uh, internship seriously, it could make a difference. Uh, instead of being a job seeker, you could be a job giver. So, 
Yes, sir. Uh, Please we, provide internships to our students. See, we, we, we normally, as industrialists, we complain that students are no good for industry. But then, what is what are we trying to do? So, as industry, we would like to bring them here and let them see the machines. You can see the automatic machines, which uh, runs one million times every day. And then, even after ten years, there is no one plus minus one mil error in that. So you can see the amount of effort going into the material science there, and the finishing, the way in which you can machine them and then put them together in the lubrication, and then we talk about uh, uh, all this shows that what our students have studied and what is the rest of the world is doing is there is a huge gap, and then ultimately it's you engineers who have done that. But then you, from today, if you start having out of the goals knowledge. Try to have a passion for knowledge, and then learn something beyond what the teacher teaches. I think you will be a great successful person, both as an entrepreneur or entrepreneur within your company. Thank you, thank you, sir. We will also be grateful if you are recruit our students as well, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now is the time we acknowledge and encourage the authors for their excellence in research and presentation. I request to Mr. K. Vijay Kumar Gupta Garu to announce the names of best papers of Track One. So oh, that's a great pleasure for me. Uh, uh, the best paper, the Track One, best paper has been the number IC three T two zero two 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 five eight five nine five eight five nine. Comparative analysis using data mining techniques to predict the air quality and their impact on environment. And the others' names are Rahul Dev Shah, Neela Madhav Padhi, Jay Salimat, Syed Jafar Abbas, Sivo Prasad Pato, and Raja Ram Datta. Fantastic! Congratulations to Rahul Dev Shah and his team for this excellent paper on data mining. Great, and that too for predicting air quality. Great, great. Welcome. Congratulations, Rahul and team. Thank you, sir. I request Mr. K. Jagadishwar Reddy Garu to announce the names of best papers of Track Two. Uh, hi, hi. Uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, as an ex student from this college, and a special thanks to Ramadev Varun for giving this opportunity. And coming to Track Two, the best paper. ID is five three double zero. Novel design of quantum circuits for representation of grayscale images by Mr. Mayur Sakka. Uh, thank you, sir. Congratulations, Mayur Sakka. Thank you, sir. Thank. You. I request Professor K. Ashoka Reddy Garu, Principal Kids W, to announce the names of the best paper of Track Three. Your yeah, best paper, uh, Track Three. The award goes to paper ID five three one zero, titled "Trajectory Tracking Analysis of Fractional Order Nonlinear PID Controller for Single Link Robotic Manipulator System," authored by Pragati Tripathi. Jitendra Kumar and Vinay Kumar Diolia. Congratulations. Congratulations, Pragati and team. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. V. Raju, Kanier IC3 2020, announce the name of the best paper of Track Four. Best paper for Track Four. Paper ID nine three five seven. Title is. Fake face image classification by blending the scalable convolution network and hierarchical vision transformer, and the authors are Sudarshana Kirmanli. Congratulations, Sudarshana Kirmanli. Congratulations, Sudarshana and team. Thank you, sir. I now invite Professor K. Ashoka Reddy Garu, principal and conference chair, IC3 2022, to deliver the presidential address. Good evening. Warm welcome to all of you to the valedictory session of 
the Springer Fourth International Conference on Computer and Communication Technologies IC3T 2022. Respectable pronouns to the most respected chairman of this institute, Captain V. Lakshmi Gantaragaru, honorable member of parliament, respected treasurer Sri P. Narayan Redigaru and other respected members of the Akishala Education Society, chief guest of today's valedictory function, Mr. Vijay Kumar Guptaji, guest of honor, our uh, proud alumnus of this institute, Mr. Dajeshwar Reddy and my colleagues on the dais, head Professor M. Raju, Professor Rama Madam, Program Chair and uh, other colleagues of mine who organized very actually this international conference. Dr. B. Janalakshmi Madam, Dr. V. Raju, Dr. C. H. Sridevi, Dr. T. Sunil Kumar, the professors, the faculty, the presenters of this conference and all the viewers, a warm welcome to all of you to the valedictory session. At the outset, my congratulations goes to my team, IC3T 2022, under the program chair, Professor Rama Madam. She has taken keen interest in taking this international conference forward for the last three sessions and with the commitment that the team of faculty and staff at the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering here, headed by Professor M. Raju, we are very much optimistic to carry out, to take it forward, the future editions of this international conference. And never compromising on the quality of the organizing of this international conference. In the inaugural session, the guest of honor, Mr. Srijan Varun Raju, he has clearly mentioned the steps that the Springer management has taken to ensure the quality in selection of the papers and then organizing this international conference. And we are very glad that good number of papers have been presented during this conference and extremely glad to know that even the young talent from abroad presented their papers and with the kind of the participation that this conference witnessed, we are extremely glad that this conference has created a platform to share the research outcome of the young talent and this is in fact the requirement of society today. Young talent entering into research, innovation, incubation and into the area of entrepreneurship is the requirement of society across the globe. And needless to mention, organizing such conferences anywhere and especially in institutes of 43 year old institutions like this Kakati Institute of Technology and Science Varangal, which is always standing for projecting quality and sending quality outcome to the society. The research and innovation activities will be definitely strengthened in the institute in the future days to come. And I take this opportunity to really thank the Chief Guest and uh, Guest of Honor of today's valedictory session. Our proud alumnus, Jagadish, we are very proud of you. You have uh, made a marvelous attempt in the area of embedded systems and the interaction is really encouraging to all the 
young engineers, the way you have learned the embedded systems, you said with your own experience, you came to know about embedded systems. And that is the beauty of learning, which we are in fact now terming it as the self-learning. You did it back 2006, and now national education policy and outcome-based education in technical institutions are emphasizing on the self-learning ability of the students. So self-learning has no replacement. The best way of learning. Thank you very much, uh, Jagdish, for uh, sharing your valuable experiences. You nicely mentioned how you got the differences between general systems and embedded systems. Design metrics for embedded systems. Latest technologies, including IoT. And what are the expected skills from the students if they wish to work in the area of embedded systems? And very encouraging remark that you made is that we should not escape from doing projects. I'm sure your inputs will be nicely taken at our level and all the audience will definitely take it in a right way. Thank you very much, uh, Jagdish, for your great time. We are extremely glad that our proud alumnus is there in the society, influencing the lives of several peoples in the area of emirate system. Thank you very much for your time. Sir uh, Vijay Guptaji, we also take this opportunity to thank from bottom of my heart on behalf of entire fraternity of this institution, Kakati Institute of Technology and Science Warangal. Thank you very much, sir. You have been supporting this institution. You also gave us an opportunity to enter an MOU with the great LED manufacturer, the very first LED manufacturer in India. Congratulations, sir. And this institution, and on behalf of this organizing committee of this international conference, we would like to congratulate you, sir, having produced the LED light which can kill the COVID virus. That is really a great breakthrough in the technology that the present days of Make in India boom is exactly happening. And I just shift to Jagdish Reddy. You made a nice statement in the context of Make in India when majority of the things are happening in the areas of assembly in India. Gupta's invention has really made a great breakthrough in the context of Make in India. And you made nice interaction on the efficiency of LEDs and most importantly you talked on evolution of LEDs from indicator to illuminators and that is amazing technology sir you are doing great job and if we take the internship process in your uh, interaction you thanked two great organizations Baba Atomic Research Center and Tata Institute of Fundamental Research where you did your industry internship and you said the internship at these great organizations prompted you towards your entrepreneurship ideas in LED manufacturing. This is in fact laid as a foundation in the national education policy NEP 2020 which says Every education institution must make all efforts to envisage multidisciplinary engineering education with equal emphasis on industry internships. And you are the very great living example, sir, where you said you got transformed your 
complete thinking in the area of design and technology and that industry internships made you now the leader, one of the pioneers in LED manufacturing in India. Congratulations for that, sir. This all together, we had an excellent interaction with the two experts in this valedictory function, which made this international conference truly equipped having an equivalent dose of industry participation. Thank you very much both the industry leads for sparing your available time to join with us in this valedictory function. And I am glad that my team at the conference did great job. I really appreciate all the efforts put in by the department of uh, ECE. ECE department will be specially recognized in this institute for having successfully organized the third international conference in this area and I am sure the faculty and staff will put the same similar efforts with increased enthusiasm to see the future editions of the international conference as a great success without compromising on quality. These few things, I take this opportunity to thank uh, Roy Madam, she graced our inaugural function and she is also one of the editors of uh, the book which will be released by Spinger, Mathini Sellathurai ma'am and uh, Suresh Chandra Satpati, thank you very much and my friend Srijan Raju has been instrumental in making this international conference happen at this 41 year old, 43 year old institution and uh, I also thank Professor Bobby George at IIT Madras Department of Electrical Engineering for his timely guidance to this international conference and uh, for having accepted the with the Springer conference as one of the members on the editorial board. Professor Rama Madam is also there on the editorial board. Surjan Raju professor is also on the editorial board and I am sure the proceedings of this conference will come out in a beautiful way and sure as this conference stood for quality, the papers published in these conference proceedings will have lot of citations in the research area. Thank you very much as my professor, Professor Rama Madam in her introductory remarks has nicely mentioned, the connectivity with this 43 year old institution should be there and we will do all efforts to get all the presenters who did their great job in this conference. Please look for future editions. We hope to see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now the time to listen from the participants here. We would like to know how well the efforts resonated to you. I request the participants to give us your valuable feedback on the Springer IC3 2022. I request the participants to give us your valuable feedback feedback on the Springer IC3 2022. Thank you one and all. We are proceeding. It's time to show our gratitude to the session chairs for their precious time. Now I, now I request principal sir 
ప్రొఫెసర్ కె అశోక రెడ్డి గారు టు ప్రజెంట్ సర్టిఫికేట్ అండ్ గిఫ్ట్ టు సెషన్ చైర్స్ యాజ్ అ టోకెన్ ఆఫ్ గ్రాటిట్యూడ్ డాక్టర్ ఆర్ శ్రీకాంత్ డాక్టర్ వి చంద్రశేఖర్ రావు డాక్టర్ ఎస్ శివప్రియాంక డాక్టర్ కుమార్ దూర్తి డాక్టర్ డి వేణు డాక్టర్ ఎస్ ఉమామహేశ్వర్ డాక్టర్ కె సౌజన్య డాక్టర్ వి వెంకటేశ్వర్ రెడ్డి Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. M. Raju Garu, Head of the Department, ECE, to present the memento to Dr. C. H. Sri Devi and Dr. T. Sunil Kumar, co-conveners of IC3-2022. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. B. Ramadevi, Professor of ECE, to present a memento to Dr. B. Raju and Dr. B. Dhanalakshmi, Conveners of IC3-2022. Thank you. Thank you. 
थैंक यू मैडम Thank you, Madam. Now I request Principal Sir to present the memento to Dr. V. Rama Devi, Professor of ECE, and Dr. M. Raju, Head of the Department ECE. Now I request Dr. B. Rama Devi and Dr. M. Raju Garu to present a memento to our beloved principal, Professor K. Ashoka Redigar. Thank you, ma'am, sir. Gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul. As we come to the close of our valedictory ceremony, I invite Dr. T. Sunil Kumar, co-convener, IC3 2022, to propose vote of thanks. Very good afternoon to you all. This is Dr. T. Sunil Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of EC. It gives me immense pleasure to propose vote of thanks on behalf of IC3T and Kids W. Firstly, I would like to thank our kind management, especially our most respected chairman, Captain Sri V. Lakshmi Kandarao sir, ex-MP, RJ Sabha, and our Treasurer Sri P. Narayan Reddy sir, for their constant encouragement and support in conduction of this fourth international conference on computer and communication technologies IC3T 2022 at our campus. I thank our chief guest for the inaugural session, Professor N. V. Ramana Rao sir, Director and IT Varangal for accepting our invitation. I thank our guest of honor for the inaugural session and corresponding editor of IC3D 2022, Dr. K. Sujan Raju, Professor and Head of CMR TC. I thank Dr. Martini Selaturai, Professor Harriet Watt University UK and Dr. Suresh Chandra Satapati, Professor and Dean Research KWIT Bhuvaneshwar for delivering the keynote address. I thank our chief guest for the valedictory session, Mr. K. Vijay Kumar Gupta, CEO, Quality Photonics and LED Chip Indus Private Limited for accepting our invitation. I thank our guest of honor for the valedictory session, our proud alumnus, Mr. K. Jagadish, Jagadishwar Reddy, 
Managing Director, Elegant Embedded Solutions Private Limited for accepting our invitation. I would like to th thank our below principal and conference chair of IC3T 2022, Professor K. Ashoka Reddy, sir, for his continuous motivation and encouragement. I would like to thank Program Chair of IC3T 2022, Professor B. Ramadevi, for her unconditional support in smooth conduction of this program. I would like to thank Head of the Department, Mr. In, Professor M. Raju, for his guidance and encouragement towards the success of the conference. I thank all the session chairs for witnessing the conference presentations out of your busy schedule. I thank all the national and international advisory and technical committee members for their guidance and support. My special thanks to all the reviewers for their valuable time and submitting the reviews in time. Thanks to all the faculty and staff of our department for their support. Thanks to all the authors who have submitted their papers and congratulations to the authors of best papers of ICT 2022. My sincere thanks to all the people who have directly and indirectly involved in successful conduction of this program. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The end of the story is now beginning up for many others. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Join for national anthem. Mana Dina Yaka Jayani Parata Bagya Vidata Punjaba Sindhu Kujarata Marata Dravida Utkala Vanga Vindhya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jala Ditaranga Tava Shubha Nami Jage Tava Shubha Shisha Mage Kahe Tava Jaya Gada Jenagana Mangala Dayaka Jaya He Bharata Bhagya Vidata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Thank you.